Marcus, I'm the, the crazy guy that emails the, uh, the list with all the information about the hack nights that we run every month. Um, and I thought we would talk today about the classes I've got to say in UIKit. Um, just running here out of curiosity, who's actually sort of played with UI Scroll View a bit? Who's sort of grabbed it, dragged it across, got something up and running? Yeah? Who's like given it both barrels and gone a whole hog and put like rotations in and animations and all kinds of other interesting stuff? Okay. Uh, who actually really enjoyed the experience and would line up tomorrow? <laughs> oh, oh, really have another go at it. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it is an interesting class. Um, and we'll talk about some of the, um, the, you know, the progressions that you can go from having a simple scroll view up and running to doing some of those things today. Um, just briefly a little bit about, about me. Red Artisan's uh, my company. That's where I do sort of most of my freelance work these days, uh, sort of after hours things. Uh, I've got a blog there and my Twitter account and all that kind of stuff so all, all listed there. Um, actually, during the day, I work at the New Zealand Stock Exchange uh, with you know, Gareth and a few other guys, um, mainly doing a lot of rail stuff. So for me, Coco and iPhone stuff is really hobby and sort of side projects, um, but you know, something I, I totally really enjoy doing. So before I get to the technical stuff, I actually thought I'd take a step back and uh, start off with a bit of a story. Um, back in uh, 2008, uh, I travelled down to uh, DubDub with um, Gareth and a couple of other guys that I'm sure here in this room as well. Um, as you've got a little photo here for you. This is when we were lining up at five in the morning. You don't remember when we were sleeping. Six in the morning. And, um, <laughs> oh, wow. It was all nice and orderly. We were having a break. Basically, once you go under that sign around the corner, then it's up the escalator. It's a mad sprint to the keynote to see Steve. Steve go on and tell you stuff. There's actually a picture of Gareth having a nap in the sleep. <laughs> <laughs> this is, um, I haven't had any sleep since we got off the airplane. Yeah, it was a very late night mm -hmm. and a very early, early morning, wasn't it? Uh, so we took, I might still be drunk. <laughs> took as much option as we could to get some, uh, get some rest. But anyway, it was, a, it was a really great time. I really enjoyed you know, being there when the 3G was released and the SDK was finally made available for um, the records and it was really good. Um, went to as many sessions as I could and I decided when I was going to get back to Australia I'd pursue doing iPhone development on sites, you know, side projects for my, my RAL stuff. Um, and then maybe, you know, down the track after some side projects, get into it, you know, even full time and, and take that off as, a, as, as like a whole other career path. Um, I got back to Australia and it was kind of a, um, it, it kind of happened that way to start with. I um, got introduced to this company called Better Sports. They, um, they have this, this golf guide, um, which, which they sell as a book. It's a very tiny kind of back pocket guide. Um, and these guys, I'd uh, done some work with one of the other clients I'd done some rails work for. Oop. Flashing, flashing. Um, and basically the story was is that you would go along, play a game of golf, you know, and, and you might have some kind of disagreement about the rules, so you pull this out of your back pocket. You know. And so when the, the iPhone was released, they were so excited and they thought, oh, we want to get this on the phone. Um, and it was kind of, kind of great. The guy was the same size, almost identical to the size of the phone. And so it actually fit the phone quite well. It was just a fold out kind of thing with 20 of these pages on it. The only interesting thing was is that they'd actually taken the Photos app as their inspiration for what they wanted the app to look like. And if you remember, like, back in 2008 when we had our <coughs> first 3G phones, you know, we used to, the Photos app was like the killer app for the 3G. You used to get it and you'd do this, and then you'd do this, and then you'd do this, and then you'd do this, <laughs> and then you'd do this. When you get sick of that, you'd do this, and then you'd do this. <laughs> And pretty much like any app back then that did rotations or that had pin zooming was like a killer app and it did really well in the store. Um, and so they said, just make it, just make it look like a photos app. You know, we want to rotate, we want to pinch and that's really it, but just use our content, that's all we want. <coughs> and I thought, well that's great, I'll, uh, I'll have a bit of a go. So you know, I went off and um, looked through my notes from DubDub and looked through all the sample code that I could find, had a bit of a go. I, I found the um, page control demo that you guys probably remember from the early SDKs which basically had a page to scroll view, and as you did swipes, it would swipe in pages of different colours. And I thought, great, all I've got to do is I've just got to get this colours replaced with the image work and the content that's on this particular app. And I'll be right, I think I quoted something like a month's worth of time after hours. You know, I reserved like the, the week between Christmas and New Year's to actually get it done. And then I got straight into it, I thought this is going to be awesome. I had a, a good, uh, good go, and then quickly found out that, ah, if I go, I'm stumped, totally stumped. <laughs> no pun intended. This is uh, uh, Tom Dowdy, I think his name is, from Stumpy Experts at um, WWDC. 
make sure you guys definitely want to go to that dive because it's um, most likely the last of some of the experts that they'll be running. They um, apparently aren't be doing any more after the next one if they don't get some things changed at the venue. Um, but yeah, I was completely stumped when I had a, had a go at this, um, this scroll view thing. And it, you also remember like back in 2008 when we had, um, we had no documentation, we had you know, the Apple docs, that was basically it. There were no videos. I mean, the Dove videos came out two or three months later. Um, there's no Twitter stuff. It was all, you know, just very, very tough. And I basically said, well, what I've got to do is get the people that are similar to me that are trying to do this kind of stuff and find out, you know, what other people are doing with UI scroll view and, and other classes. And I guess the positive from this is that that's what drove the creation of the Hack Nights. Um, that's kind of why I sent out the scene saying, hey, everyone's get together and hack together. Um, but I had a bit of a look around and I found out that I wasn't the only one that uh, had problems with um, UI scroll view. Um, UI scroll view has way too many knobs and switches. I finally conquered UI scroll view what our rotation was by not using UI scroll view. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks like Easter eggs in UI scroll view are officially a thing. <laughs> this is one of my favourites. One of these days, UI scroll view, bang, zoom straight to the moon. <laughs> and this one was quite timely as well. Uh, UI scroll view is one crap. God save Joe Hewitt for TT scroll view. That was quite timely because 320 came out just as this project was due and I was totally desperate so I managed to, I was just very lucky to be using GitHub and looking at the recent project list when, um, when it got uh, released and I saw it and I was like the fourth or fifth person to actually fork the project. Um, and I emailed Joe Hewitt and I thanked him and said, mate, thanks very much, you've just saved my ass, I've you know, just managed to be able to get this stuff up and running in the app. And he said, no worries, and wrote back and said, oh, you know, I was like one of the first people to sort of thank him. He said, I hope you get it up and running in your application if you like. So that was a, a real time saver. But um, 320 was a really, really you know, good framework um, to, to come out right at that time when I certainly needed it. Um, so to go forward one year to last year's Dub Dub, um, there was a really good talk that was given by Josh and Eliza about mastering um, iPhone scroll views. And these guys, they really know this stuff really well. It was an awesome talk. After the talk, I went down to the labs and got some time with Eliza to go out and tell him. I, I told her about all these problems I was having with um, the scroll view, and I told her, like the client just said, make it like the photos up just with our content. And she looked at me and she actually giggled and had a bit of a laugh. And I, and I thought, what's, what's going on? And um, she said, well, when we actually built the photos app originally, there was no UI <coughs> scroll view. The whole photos app was completely custom because it came out of a 1G. So I didn't feel so bad then. I thought, uh, it's not time, not quite as bad. The scroll view that we all got was a, an after development based on what they thought the developers should be able to do with the scroll view, not what was actually in the photos app itself. Um, so a lot of the stuff I'm going to show you up now, the technical stuff, is actually from an app that um, I've been working on with, uh, with Gareth and Justin. Um, and we've got almost ready, I think by next Coca Heads we should be ready to, to release it. But um, I'll just step through some of the things that we can do and um, talk about some of the, the technical aspects of using scroll view, some of the things that can happen along the way. Um, the, uh, the apps, uh, what we're going to talk about is just um, building like a little simple photo viewer. Um, this photo viewer is just going to have like a bunch of photos, you know, I've got like a whole set of photos I've taken with my, my camera. And we'll have like a kind of a grid um, kind of view like this where we'll be able to see, you know, a bunch of, bunch of photos, um, give it a tap and That'll then just push through to, an, on a navigation control, push through to another scroll view, and then on that scroll view we'll be able to then swipe across. And as we swipe, we'll see, just like the photos at the next you know, particular slide coming in, until we get to the point where it, the next one's coming in, and then we'll be able to tap back, back to the main screen. So, very simple kind of um, application. We'll sort of step through, you know, how that, uh, how that all hangs together. So, let's swip over to Xcode. Uh, can you guys see that at the back? Yeah, Do you want a chair? Uh, uh, probably okay. We'll see how it goes. Alright, so. So here's the first party app <coughs> I'm running. So we've just got a bunch of. Um, cells that are up in this, this grid. I'll, sort of, I'll just step through the code to actually get this part up and running. It's, it's not too difficult. I'll, I'll walk through this code and what we'll do is then in each sort of successive update add a little bit of functionality and see what happens along the way. Um, so it's really one view controller. 
uh, this photo views controller that's got a, a custom scroll view class. It's um, just a derivative of scroll views. And in the actual scroll view, uh, the actual photo views controller, in the load view, you just initialize that, set up some of the properties. Um, the actual scroll view itself takes the height and width of each cell. So that's <coughs> just the dimensions of each of these kinds of cells around this lovely picture at Tasmania. Um, this old house that was in Tasmania on holiday when I was there. Um, so that just sets up what the actual dimensions are going to be. Um, then in view did load, we just go to our model, um, create an instance of our model controller, and then just iterate through that, creating a whole bunch of photo views that then get added to that, that scroll view. And then as they get added, the layout happens in the, inside the actual scroll view. There's just the famous return yes statement for auto rotation. Um, and then inside the actual animation transition, there's just a check to see here if we're in portrait mode, then we just take the portrait dimensions. And if we're in landscape mode, we'll take the landscape dimensions. Um, that doesn't matter too much when you're on the phone, because in the phone you can hide the navigation bar and the status bar. But on the iPad, you can only sort of hide the nav bar. The, the status bar can't actually be hidden. So you've got this 20 pixel difference in the orientations that cause a slight difference in the, the pixels that you can get a perfect as aspect ratio with. Um, then there's the alloc, uh, as usual. So over on the scroll view, We've just got here a descendant of UI scroll view. Um, the properties that indicate how big the cells are going to be. Some storage for the views. Um, that's just marked as read only. And then a method that we use to put them on. That's what the controller was using to add the photo views. And on the actual implementation of that, it's just pretty straightforward. We've got storage for the photo views. Um, we've implemented that, that method when we actually add the scroll views, just to add it as a subview. And then layout subviews does the actual, the actual work. So, here we've just got uh, you know, a couple of constants. Um, when we're variables at the top, x and y is the positioning of the cells. And so we we'll just go through all of the different uh, photo views that are represented inside the scroll view and just create frames based on you know, where it can be. So the x and y gets incremented as we go along, across the fraction, based on the item width and the item height. And then the, the, as it gets past the size of the bounds, the Y gets dropped down and we get the next row and the next row and the next row. And then again we set up the content size. And that's then what gives us the, the scrolling. That's also what gives you having rotations working. So when you do your rotations, the uh, you know, scroll view gets to lay out its subviews, and lay out subviews automatically lays it out as the bounds have changed. Um, on the actual photo view itself, that's just a UI view. We've got um, a UI image view holding the content. Um, and that's just been added as subview, and its layout subframe, layout subviews just make sure that it takes up the entire size of the cell. Um, and on the model side, this is just quite quite small and simple stuff. It's just basically an array of photos. These photos are packaged in the app, and they just get loaded up from the bundle. They're just JPEGs in this um, photos directory. Just for simplicity, it just loads that up, creates a photo object, and adds it to this content. Um, and the photos themselves just have a path, and there's two properties, two read-only properties that are built up off of the actual path itself. So the title of the image we take is being, um, we effectively split on the path separator and then take the what's at the end as being the name of the photo, so it's the file name basically, so cheating a little bit. And then um, the actual image contents just read directly off, off the disk. Can we just take the last part of the because I Yeah, yeah, yeah so you could just do that as well, <coughs> for sure. Just, just in case they change the slashes to columns like the yeah. Mac has or something like that. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. <coughs> Alright, so I'll stop that and flip across to the device. Let's run it on that device and see how it looks. Forty-five meg of 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> memory. Oh. And uh, <coughs> that's certainly too much to get up and running on the device. So we just got killed. We got ejected before we even got the first screen up and running. So that's a little tough. Um, this sort of leads me to my first rule of UI scroll view development. Um, always run it on the device. Or at least run on the device often. You don't have to run it all the time on the device. But it kind of makes sense because your iPad is fixed dimensions and your scroll view lets your iPad go from this size to infinite, you know, if you so configured it. But <coughs> scroll view doesn't actually give you infinite memory and it doesn't give you infinite processing power. So, um, yeah, check, check what you're doing on the device. I, um, I'll put back across to... It's an updated version. So in this version here, I'll just put a little loop in here and stop it at, uh, at 5. And we'll see that that should be enough to actually get it um, up and running. But the problem is it doesn't scroll and we haven't got enough content, so it's not a very compelling experience. So there's another trick. <coughs> What's actually using the memory? Is it loading all of the images into the array? Is that? Yeah, yeah. it's all the image yeah. data. Yeah, yeah, it's all the yeah. image data. And creating all the sub views. Yeah. Because it's not just the JPEGs, like for the JPEGs they might be really small, yeah. but when it actually loads them, it decompresses them. Yeah, it uh, decompresses them into memory, and then you got to squeeze them down to the, the thumbnail size, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, these are, are about 1,500 by 1,000, so they're quite you know, reasonably large okay. you know, images, so pretty quick on the content. So we've got like a little cheat trick here that just to get the, um, the main screen up and running, uh, and we're supplying a, a shrink factor. Um, so whereas before we were just reading the, the, you know, the path, creating an image directly off the path, we're just going to fire a shrink factor and then def and shrink it down by three times. So instead of it being this big, it's now going to be a third of the size. Uh, and that'll be enough to get it up and running. The other thing that I've done is just add here, next to the image view, I've just add a, a little label. So this label's got the actual title from the edge. And um, there's a couple of properties I've put on here. There's a clear color background. Uh, and set the shadow opacity and shadow offset. So that's enough to get it up and running. You don't really have to be able to see or read any of that just to see that we've got a page full of content. Let's see how it scrolls. It's nice and chunky. Um, I might do it's an Android experience. Wow, it's been so true. <laughs> I just flip over to instruments and um, <laughs> we'll run it in the, the core animation um, instrument sampler. The core animation um, instrument sampler is, is really interesting. It gives us um, some really, really cool information. So if I start scrolling now, you'll see we're getting about eight Sweet. frames a second. It's photo roll, isn't it? It's not very good at all. Ship it. <laughs> <laughs> Steve wouldn't be happy. Yeah. So what you can actually do with this um, instrument, if you turn on color blended layers, um, this only works on the device, it doesn't actually show up on the, on the simulator, but it colors the, the different parts of the screen that are getting recomp recomposited and which ones aren't. So anything that's green there is good, and when it scrolls it's not going to redraw that, but the things that are red are uh, having been redrawn for each frame as it scrolls up and down. So the red bits are sort of showing that, yeah, that's, that's a, bit of a, a bit of a problem because it's having to redraw all those. Um, in reality, for the iPad, that, that amount of red is not too bad. We certainly shouldn't be seeing a drop to eight frames a second for that kind of that kind of um, you know, amount of red. The actual problem relates to shadows and the shadow opacity that was set on the um, on the actual label itself. So, sort of my, my second I mean not a rule, but um, second little thing. Whenever you hear the word shadow, or another famous one, corner radius, not a really good one. Any of those two things, alarm bells should go off in your mind. Any of those things inside a scroll view uh, will cause problems. You can, um, you can rasterize that now. You can. Yeah, you can turn the, the rasterization. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, which makes it a bit easier, which is good. But um, it's something that uh, again, you come back to running it on the device all the time because you can make this one line little change or two lines of a little change, and then be 30 commits down the track working on another feature, and you'll go back, run it on the device, and this screen three pages ago will have some you know, performance problem really on the device. But on the simulator, it just runs fine because their Macs are you know, awesome with their power. Um, we do have another option, though, and this was um, given to me by 
Jeff Lamarche. Uh, Jeff Lamarche is one of the authors of uh, one of the iPhone books that's out there. Beginning um, A Press. Oh, yeah, 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 iPhone development. Yeah. So Jeff had this really cool tweet, blog post, and a really cool tweet, and he basically said, given the choice between using an image view to show an image <coughs> or draw recting that image, choose the draw rect if you can. Like if there's no other reason not to draw rect it, just draw rect it on the view directly. So in this updated version, I've, up, I've updated that photo view. The rest of it's pretty much the same. Um, <coughs> but I've removed the image subview that's here. And I've just implemented draw rect here. So I'll actually draw the image directly onto the view um, you know, without needing a subclass of, without needing a UI image view in there at all. And so in between the flicker, um, the way this code's working is we just uh, <laughs> firstly to save the <laughs> graphic state. Um, do some translations on the CTN. Maybe that's one. No, you draw a record right upside down. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's like using quartz coordinates, it's bottom yeah. left, not top left, so you have to translate it so that it draws out correctly. It's a pain, yeah. <laughs> so if we actually have an image, the, um, there's just a little bit of math here, and that just works out. You know, if the image is yay big and we want to draw it this big, what's the best size that image is that's going to fit here? So we don't actually downscale, we're just drawing it at this particular size. Um, mm -hmm. So that calculates what the dimensions are going to be. And then we use CG, core, CG context draw image to actually draw the actual image onto the context. And that border, you might not have seen it on here, but it just had a border width as well. Um, that's just implemented then using a stroke. So we just stroke the, the width of the two pixel um, boundary. And then with actual um, title across the top, um, we select the font and just set up some other parameters like the, the shadow stuff. So in the in the graphic stuff, you can do all that shadow referencing stuff directly, uh, as I've done here, and then draw title. Just uses CG show text at point. Uh, I've just got to add, a, add an offset, and then we just draw that directly on there as well. When I wrote this code, I was looking back and going, so it's been a while since I've pulled out string length. Let's <laughs> um, rerun this one. Oh, yeah, that's inside core animation. So the images are in the bottom, I just, um, what well, the images, the labels are at the bottom in this particular version. If I scroll this, it's a lot smoother. And we're getting, what, 58, 55, 58 frames per second in the scrolling, which is really neat. The rotation works nicely as well. So that's a, uh, a nice little neat, neat trick of being able to um, look at your performance on the device to improve it just by drawing and everything rather than using you know, sub, sub views. I guess have you, have you <coughs> tried to see the differences between using the rasterization flag now? Because there was a, a presentation of setting that on and the difference that made. Yeah, I think um, I actually run it on this particular one. One of the reasons I didn't put it on this, uh, this particular project I was working on is because when it rasterizes and you do a pinch, um, yeah, this is doing the same way. Yeah. Really yeah. high quality. So yeah. how, how are you going to do that? You did that code there, or you draw it, you you putting it in a drawing? Um, in which one I'm not going to pinch on. That's easy fix. Yeah, the other thing you want to be careful about when you're drawing directly in context like that is on yeah. the new Retina, Retina display. You yeah. have to sort of take that in bed. You don't, you don't get a lot of freebie yeah. Yeah. resolution doubling, so yeah. it's easy to just check your content to scale and double up. And yeah, for sure. Just something to keep in mind. Yeah. yeah. So Mark, does it know why UI image view is so bad? Like, what, is, isn't that just wrapping some of the same code and doing that for you? Um, what's, it, what's it doing extra that's, that's so bad? Yeah, so I mean, UI image view was mostly green in that. So I reckon if I didn't have those labels with the shadow offsets on it and the, the, um, the clear color background, mm -hmm. that probably would have been reasonably good performance. Um, but once I added the label um, and then put the, the clear color background so that it was tra transparent and able to see through, I slowed it down a fraction, but adding the shadows is what really dropped it, dropped it on its knees. Yeah. Every um, compositing the layers, every every frame. Yeah, yeah, the, the yeah the image view doesn't know to rasterize it and just leave it there, because it's like you're you're dealing with the view, so it's just like oh I've got views above me, 
Whereas with the with the drawing right in the context, you can just say make it all this is the image. bits and you're done. Yeah. Around. Yeah. The other one is um, on UI table view cells. Um, if you if you use the any of the, st the standard styles that's got an image view on it, and you put rounded corners on it, that also just destroys your your scrolling performance. Um, so if you want to put rounded corners, and we all want that nice shiny rounded corners, um, then it's better just to just draw wreck that cell, or at least draw wreck that portion of the cell and have you know a label for the content or something like that. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> you could clip the image into a buffer as well, like, yeah. and render that clipped image rather than clipping every time yeah. you're rendering. Okay, uh, we'll across to five. So <coughs> now we've got um, some content up there that we can actually, you know, scroll up and down and see. Um, we'll actually look at the next part for putting the page in. So it was a really good talk. I, I really recommend everyone looks at this talk as uh, good, good material. This is um, from this year's WWDC. So the same people that did the, um, the previous year's Scorpius talk came up again, Eliza and Josh, did a really good talk. And they did a really good example about how you do page views. Their sample code was um, is really good. I think it's probably the best <coughs> implementation to see how to do paging views with images of different sizes and scale. Um, but it does have some flaws that you know, I've, I've pulled out in the examples I've used. It's almost like the Apple example code seems to have one fundamental flaw in it, so that if you use it in a real app, it bites you in the ass. But the other than all that, it's good at showing you how to, how to sort of you know, build good build things with their concepts. Um, and the way that um, they were doing the paging was to actually use scroll views in scroll views. So the architecture is, is kind of like this. You have a, um, a scroll view in the device that you use for paging only, so that's just doing the left and right swipes. And then each page has an, an extra scroll view in it, and that scroll view handles the zooms. And on those actual individual zooming scroll views sits then an image view, and that's got the actual content. So it's scroll views inside scroll views with image view in the inner scroll view. Um, now this was something that didn't work at all with the um, 2.0 SDK, or at least it was very undef undefined. Um, and it was something that they fixed up in the, the three from OSDK, or at least they said the behavior is somewhat defined, but um, it's not really something they could you know, talk about. But um, that's the architecture they've got in this, other, in this particular example. So I'll step through the code to that, um, and we'll see, see what happens when we start adding a few things like rotation. Okay, so on that original photo views controller, we've got in our um, view did load, which has added a tap gesture recognizer. And so when we actually get the tap, that'll then call our uh, did receive tap method. And then we're just simply pushing directly our, our new photo slide views controller directly onto the navigation controller. Um, we're not actually caring about which image we tapped on, but we're just tapping on anything on the scroll view and we'll push through. So, um, so the selected controller itself just a, is another UI view controller, um, and this is the page view scroll view. That's the, the lower level one that's just handling paging only. Um, we've just got a reference here to the photos that we're showing, the different pages that we're that we're um, paging between. Um, there's a reference to the current page, and that's the current page that's sitting close to uh, the actual. Uh, screen, and then there's something here sort of that you're used to with um, uh, some of the you know, concepts in table view controllers and annotation views, which is to use um, cell reuse. So um, you can imagine we have heaps of photos, and as we start paging across, if we have more and more and more photos, we'll eventually run out of memory. So the concept that gets used here is then to reuse those pages as they go off screen, so that we're reusing the same page and conserving memory. Um, so. This one up and running. This is going to simulate it. Okay, so we're inside navigation control now. We tap through. We'll go to the first image. So we'll see you go scroll into the next one. So we've got basic paging up and running, and this is pretty much the that sample application or, or parts of that sample application that the Apple guys had. The only difference is, is they're using CI tile layer under the hood, so if you did pinches, that um, you could then progressively load in high resolution to the image. So I kind of pulled all that out just to, to leave it you know, simple. So we've got paging up and running. 
the problem is it doesn't rotate. So to get that to rotate, So rotation, we've just got a rotation set to, I guess, different one. So rotation set to yes. So we'll get this one up there. And see what happens. I'd like to say that this is usually all you should have to do to get the scroll views rotating nicely when they're paged. Um, but okay, rotate. So it doesn't quite increase its size. There's also some weird, weird scrolling size. It fixes itself up when you go back. And there's some interestingness going on there. And if we scroll forward, let's rotate back. And it hasn't resized either. And then, whoa, jumps and. Well, you said the auto resizing mask. Ah, you're jumping ahead. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, it gets a bit confused. Um, so this was, was pretty much standard standard scroll view, but the only thing is that um, we've done is turn on rotation support. Um, so yeah, when this happened the first time I was looking at it, I started sweating. I was like, man, what is this? Like, this is a standard Apple class. It should be working fine. Like, what's wrong? About to give up my career. I'm like, no, nah, but I'm out. And then, um, then I thought, oh, let's you know, be more sensible, have a more to think about it, and look and look at what's going on. Um, the first thing that I really recommend when you have these kinds of problems is stick a um, bit of debug layout on the thing. So in this particular app I've got, um, I'm just seeing the border, um, the different colors on the different views, because in, in this app we've got three different levels of things. So here you can sort of see the, the yellow, uh, the yellow's on the outside of the entire bounds of the, the outer scroll view, and then the red is the inner scroll view, and then the white is actually the image that's sitting on that inner scroll view. Um, because when you see these things go crazy directions and run around, it's a bit hard to try and debug and work out which particular scroll view was playing up or which image was playing up. So I definitely recommend that. I definitely recommend that they're different widths, otherwise they'll overlap and you won't see individual ones. So if we rotate around, you see here that that inner scroll view, the red one, hasn't actually resized. Um, and I reckon that's what's causing it to scroll up beyond the bottom X hasn't resized at all. And it doesn't really. So if we go here and then move, just yeah, it just jumped completely. So I was going to ask you around what property do you have to set to make it resize out? Yeah, you know, what <laughs> With the resizing mask set, this is on the actual image scroll view itself. So we've just got the auto resize mask set here, and then on the actual on the actual image itself. Which one of the two scroll views is the resizing mask one? This is on the inner one, okay. on the actual page one. So now we rotate. Okay. So now the inner scroll view is scrolling out. The resizing mask is on the image as well. It's taking up the, the full size. <laughs> So that's working well, but we've still got some weirdness happening there, and we've still got, when we rotate, this jumpiness as well. So for that, um, I've actually added a little bit of logging. Here in the callbacks when we do a rotation, I uh, will rotate to interface orientation and did rotate. Um, and I'm logging out here the bounds and the content size and the actual content offset before the rotation occurs and after. Um, if we actually look at some of the results here. Bigger. You see here, so before the rotation, our uh, bounce was 5,376, and we had 768 as our width. Um, content size was 21,504, and our offset was 5,376. And after the rotation, our um, uh, bounds x is actually the same as what it was before. The, the bounds dimensions of the actual view have switched because we've gone through the rotation. There's a slight 20 pixel difference to the status bar. The interesting thing here is the content size hasn't changed. 
and the content offset also hasn't changed. So what's actually happened is the rotation's occurred, but the scroll view still thinks the content offset that we set when the application originally started is still the same size. Right? But what we actually really want is that when we rotate, we actually want to slightly adjust the content so that its pages grow as well. So the problem is, is that the, the offset is actually not on boundary, but the content offset is not on a boundary of the page. And there's far too much, because um, we've actually, in this case, we've increased the, um, the width of the bounds. The actual um, the size of the pages has increased. So that's what causes when you get it and you move it a little bit, it flickers, because it's taking the current page index offset and then trying to work out with wrong numbers what's going on, what, what's actually, you know, which is actually, actually the problem. So the fix to that, which is something that came after lots of log statements and printing stuff out. <coughs> See, when we actually are inside the animation transition, we'll animate rotation to interface orientation. We actually make sure that we set this, the content size. So when this callback actually gets called, the bounds has been changed, and so we actually know the new orientation. So we, this helper method I've got here, calculate current content size, or recalculate the content size based on us having landscape or portrait uh, images. And then we recalculate the offset based on the current index and the new page size. So this makes sure that the pages then line up. Um, there's actually another little interesting thing here. There's a, a callback that we've got on scroll view did scroll, and that calls the tile photos callback. Tile photos is what actually does the, the layout um, by calculating the first and last pages that are needed. And that's what's doing the recycle queue. That actually gets invoked when you do a rotation because the scroll view is considered to have moved a little bit. So we need to actually guard that to make sure that during a rotation we don't lay out the tiles. We do that in the animation transition and not actually in the rotation uh, as part of the normal scroll view callback. So with that, That. And then we get rotation, and we can scroll back forward. Let's go a little bit further on. And rotate, and then rotate back and forth. And then it's all hanging together. So that's really cool. So, last final couple of tasks. We don't actually have the uh, navigation bar. This is done. So to add the navigation bar back in, um, we just have a tap. So when you tap on the actual scroll view itself, we'll just call back on the navigation controllers, set navigation bar hidden, and just toggle that from its current state. So this is where I was starting to get excited. I thought I've almost got this out part of it now. The rotation's working great. It's all looking really good. We go through and then tap. Bang. Navigation bar is actually affecting the subviews of the actual scroll view, and that's a pain in the ass. So a lot of googling, a lot of stack overflow checking, actually showed that um, the only way to stop that from occurring is just to make sure in that same method. On tap to scroll, set the content offset back to what it should be, content offset x, which is the same page boundary, but the, uh, or the, the you know, y value being zero. So with that, it's the final, final update. We'll run this one back on the device. Scrolling happening, all nice and good. Tap through, so now we can slide through on the device. That's all nice and seamless. Rotation, working back as well. Rotated, swipe, and rotate back. And then tap, bar comes back, and we go back. So all starting to hang together.
Uh-huh. It seemed colour. It started off with grey and then it became Oh, at the top, yeah, yeah. it did, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's actually really all I've uh, had prepared to sort of show you guys. It was a bit of a, bit of a quick whirlwind trip through Scrolby. I don't know the pizza we can smell from here. It's getting, <laughs> getting cold, no one likes to have cold pizza. Um, so feel free to come up to the pub afterwards and ask any questions if you've got some. And um, uh, I'll, the idea of this is to publish it as a series of blog posts and some realistic code information so that you could you know, get your <coughs> when I When I started building this other app, I, I really wish that there was something out there that would give me a really good reference um, to actually using UI scroll view in, in an app all the way through to something like as complete as the Photos app. And there wasn't really something out there, so if that's something that I can get you know, by helping everybody else have to get to make them you know, go through that journey, then that'll certainly be well worth it. So um, thanks for your time and uh, see you a couple of days later.